Hello, welcome back. This tutorial will show you how to equip your desktop and mobile phones with a HUD. This tutorial is for the Advanced Framework Core 4.0. If you are currently building a VR application, I am sorry, this is not your video. First, let's have a bit of theory. The HUD consists of a menu widget, content widgets and frame widgets. The menu is the most basic widget of the HUD and always contains a set of buttons which provide access to other HUD elements. It also coordinates the rest of the HUD. Frames provide slots with interchangeable content. Frames are assigned to content widgets and ensure that the place on the screen where the content widget appears is not occupied by another HUD content widget. Content widgets provide the actual content of the HUD. To clarify, if frames overlap, like in the lower left corner of the, of the picture, both frames are cleared if a content widget of either frame is opened. If the frame of the new content widget does not overlap any filled frames, no frames are clear. Let's start by setting up a HUD with the widget the AF Core provides. For that, we need to go to the desktop pawn and add the HUD component. If you are doing a mobile application, do the same on the mobile pawn. Let's take a look at the HUD component. Under general, you can assemble your HUD. Each element of the array is specified by name, which is also shown on the HUD menu button. Under widget, add the content widget and under frame, add the frame widget. Here's a list of content widgets the RF Core provides with their corresponding frames. Let's add settings, multiplayer and debug HUD elements. Incidentally, all three share the, the left frame. Let's head to the level. Here we go. The menu is displayed at the upper right corner of the screen and the content widgets are exchanged in the left frame whenever we open a different content widget. At that opportunity, let me introduce you to the debug widget. It's a new widget that we created for the Advanced Framework 4.0, which is supposed to help you debug your application. The widget has three tabs. Under classes, you can check if your game classes, level data asset and pawns are correctly assigned. Under pawn, you can test your pawn's traces and check if the pawn actually sees what he should in a manner of speaking. Note how the actor, the trace impacts is shown in the widget. Under custom, there's room for your own personal debug functions. We hope this will enable you to debug your application more swiftly. Let's get back on track. I assume you would like to have a bit more content for your HUD. So let me show you how you can create a new content widget. First, create a widget and make it a child of the widget HUD base. So what I am going to create is a timer that looks like this. First, I need to replace the canvas with a vertical box. This is a good practice for HUD widgets especially, since it ensures the widget is scalable without issues. Now I need a text field for the time and a button. As button, I use the button hat normal, which comes with the advanced framework core and has a lot of useful logic already in place. Let's head over to the graph. For the logic of my timer, I need three events. In the event tick, I count up the time and set the text field accordingly. Now 
The conversion of the flow to minutes and seconds is implemented by the Unreal function time seconds to string. In the button pressed event, which comes directly from the button hut normal, I can start and stop the timer. Since I want to use the same button, I also want to change the button text, which is also a function already implemented in the button. In the event construct, I mainly ensure that everything is set up as I wish. Let's shortly review the code and then add our new widget to the HUD component and have a look at it. You also want a new frame for your widget? Well, let's have a look at that too. First, create a widget. Unfortunately, widgets can only inherit logic, so we have to set up the designer for each frame individually. For a frame, this constitutes at least a slot and an animation. In the graph, we only need to make a few minor adjustments. First, let's make the widget a child of the widget hut frame to get access to its logic. Next, go to class settings and fill out the conflicting hut sections array. This array divides the screen in nine sections like this. Each screen section, the slot overlaps, must be entered in this array to ensure that all overlapping slots are cleared when a widget of this slot is opened. Our slot is in the center of the screens, so let's just add center here. Lastly, we just override two functions of its parent, so the widget knows the slot and the animation we created in the designer. Now we can use the new frame in our hut. Just go to the pawn and enter it in the frame section of a hut element. Finally, let's do a little experiment and enter a few more conflicting sections in the frame to look what happens. Note how in the left example the frame on the of the multiplayer widget is cleared when the timer is opened, but not on the right. That's the effect of the additional conflicting sections we added there. That's all I've got for today. Bye bye and see you in the next video.